expert in Ireland. And this week I want to talk about keeping track of all those hundreds of plants that we have. How I keep track of what plant is where and how I remember the long botanic names that they have. Now some people say to me I must have a fantastic memory that I manage to remember these long Latin or sometimes Greek names. And the truth is that I don't. All I have is an efficient system for recording my plants and being able to easily access it. So this week I want to introduce you to my plant database. So here I am sitting down with a nice cup of tea and about to update my plant database. And I use Office 2013, the Excel on that. And we'll go in in a second just to look at it in a bit closer detail. But I just thought I'd show you my cup. I garden, therefore I am. That's so apt, isn't it? Okay, let's have a look at the database. Now, what I use is a multiple worksheet um, option. So... If you follow the mouse here, and you can see that down here, that this is the plants worksheet, and that relates to everything that you see in front of you. I also have a worksheet for seeds, and here we have all of the um, seeds that I have currently in the fridge waiting to be sown. And likewise, another worksheet for seedlings, one for cuttings, and one for annuals. Now the seeds, seedlings and cuttings will naturally feed into the plants worksheet. So the data I choose to record about each of the plants that I have is indicated here at the top of the sheet. And um, the first thing I record is the genus of each plant, the species, and this field here records the, uh, the variety, the cultivar, the grex, the form, the whatever. Um, whatever else isn't covered really under genus and species there. You can see I have varieties down here for this particular acer tree. The next column is the type of plant it is. Now this isn't a botanic term, it just refers loosely to the type of plant, so whether it's a bush, a tree, a perennial, a, an orchid. This column tells me the source, where I bought the plant or the person who gave it to me. This column shows the month that I obtained the plant and the year. As you can see in the beginning I didn't fill in the month. Now this is a very interesting column and this will tell me where the plant is planted in my garden. It doesn't apply to pot plants, so orchids or things that remain permanently in a pot, they're just going to have pot written here. But anything that's in the garden, um, here I will have an indication of whereabouts in the garden it is. And this just saves me having a lot of white plastic labels sticking up all over the place, kind of junking it up. I don't like labels at all. And the second column here shows uh, a further indication of location. So my garden is, is quite large, it's an acre in size, and within some areas or within some borders we need a further kind of pointer as to whereabouts this particular plant is going to be situated. And um, that's what location two will do. The next column is very important to me and this one will tell me whether the plant is living or dead. Now in the past what I used to do was when a plant died I used to delete it from the database but what often happened then was that the plant might pop up again the following year which is a good thing but at that stage I'd have no record of it anymore because I deleted everything from the database. So now what I do is I um, keep everything in the database and I just indicate whether it's present or gone. That one there is long since demised. This column here will tell me when the plant was last potted. This is 
particularly applicable for things that are kept in pots, but it'll also tell me when I planted something in the, in the ground. And the final column is just kind of a general others one. So the first thing I'm going to show you, the first thing um, to let you know what you can actually do with this uh, data is to show you how to sort the data. Now, if you know Excel already, you probably know how to sort data, but um, let's pretend you don't. Now, so imagine I've just uh, obtained a new plant. It's the fabulous, new, exciting AAA plant. I'm sure you all have one in your garden. And this AAA plant, well, you know, it's a succulent. So that's the code I'm going to put next to it. And um, I got it from my uh, dear friend Liga, who has given me so many plants in the past. I got it now this month, May. And I got it this year, 2015. And, well, I haven't put it anywhere yet, so that field is going to remain blank. It's certainly not planted in the garden, so that field is also going to be blank. And I haven't managed to kill it yet, so it's still alive. So I'm going to put in um, present in this column. So I'm now going to resort my data alphabetically. And what, the way to do that is to click the top left um, field here which selects the whole spreadsheet and then if you go into uh, data and sort and the important thing here is to make sure that this little box here is ticked this indicates that I have header data so I have titles to the top of my columns and that's already ticked there so I'm going to sort everything by genus so I'm going to press OK here and my spreadsheet has resorted and you can tell that because the plant AAA is no longer at the bottom and if we go to the top we can see that it's there now Okay, so that's sorting the data, which I do periodically whenever I add something into it. But the most important thing and the most useful thing I find uh, with this kind of database is to use the uh, filter option. So if we go under data and click this option here, filter, then what that does is it gives a little drop down menu here besides each of the headers on the columns. And using that drop down, I can roll up all of my data to just so show certain values. So what do I mean by that? Say for example, I click on this um, little button here under type. And now I can see all of the values I have in here, all the types of plants I have. So I've got aroids, I've got blah, 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 carnivorous plants. So if I deselect them all, and if I select, for example, aroid, and press OK, now what is displayed in front of me is only the aroids. And that's just a very much handier way of looking at data. It, like it's, it, it's much easier than resorting, sorting and resorting the whole thing just to find something. So now I can um, analyze all of my aroids and say, for example, um, I want to see all of my aroids that are alive. So I'll click on this column here, the present and the dead, and I'll deselect everything and I'll just select present. Okay, so there's all of my aroids that are present in the garden. Okie koki. So what can we do with this fantastic uh, filter tool? And it is really useful. It helps me answer all kinds of questions. Like for example, imagine I look out into the garden and I see that tree that tree whose name I can never ever remember. I can see it, I know where it is in the garden, but I can't for the life of me remember the name. So this is how I'll get the information out of the database.
So the first thing I need to do is the first filter I'm going to set is, oh, okay, so data and filter. So now the filters are on. The first thing I'm going to do is just select all of the trees that are present or all of the plants that are present. There we go. The next thing is that I know it's a tree. So I'm going to select just the trees. There we go. Now I know where this particular plant is. I can see it and it's in the section of my garden that I refer to as the uh, rose garden. Now there haven't been any roses in there for many years but I still call it the rose garden. There we go. And it's in bed number one because the rose garden area is quite a large area with various beds so I'm going to select bed number one. Okay so you can see that there are two plants that fit all of those criteria one of which is a tree peony and the other one is the disanthus tree which is the lovely um, tree whose name I can never remember but gives me glorious autumn colour. Okay, and this is the last thing I want to show you because I'm aware that this video is uh, turning out to be quite long and it's a long, long time since anyone saw any nice flowers. So we'll just kind of wrap this up briefly. And uh, the next thing is, say for example, I want to know which of my cattleyas need repotting. Then what I do here is using the filter, I'd select um, the ones that are still alive and I'm going to select the orchids only and I'm going to, so here are all my orchids, here I'm going to select just the cattleyas. Now of course if I select cattleya it's not going to give me everything in the cattleya alliance like the Lalo cattleya or so the BLCs is just going to give me the cattleyas. But um, here are all my cattleyas and here in the repot um, section is information on when they were last repot when they were last potted and what medium I used. So this is very handy and saves writing on the labels actually in the physical pots where the orchids are. And that's all. That's all I wanted to show you. So um, I hope this was useful and maybe you can adapt it to whatever you need to do yourselves. Different people may need to or want to store different types of data, but um, you can, of course, uh, you know, uh, well, adapt it as you go. Anyway, thanks very much for watching and don't forget to subscribe and thumbs up and comment and all that kind of thing. Thanks very much. Bye.